Joining us here today on console is Dr. Sandra Moore, who is a spacewalk specialist. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. My pleasure. It's really a privilege to see you again because I just saw you last week at the Neutral Buoyancy Lab where Scott Kelly and Chell Lindgren were uh, working. So thanks for joining us here today to tell us a little bit more about your job. Yeah, no problem. So the onboard crew is preparing for three spacewalks that are coming up. Um, we've been following along with some of their activities, getting the suits ready. Um, can you tell us just a little bit about um, how how the team approaches space station spacewalk training as compared to the shuttle era, when you could really train with the crews right up into their launch, but at this point, you know, you're you don't see the crews nearly as much and then sometimes many, many months before they even launch. Yeah, it's actually very different these days. We used to train specifically with the EVA team. The the team, uh, they would have up to 10 MBL runs, which are pool runs. They'd actually practice end to end and they almost have that choreography memorized even if we were doing several EVAs. This time it, it's much different. You have one team that follows the crew and you have different teams that follow planned EVAs. So you actually have a significant portion of the office. So this next series, they have um, both Butch and crew had different EVA training teams because they're on different increments. And then they have several different EVA teams that follow each of the different EVAs. So they have a series of 10 EVAs that they train with their trainers with. The first seven are planned for contingency type EVAs. So they'll see all those unique interfaces and they develop a basic skill set that we ask them to pull from for any EVA they would do. The last three EVAs are up to the training team to determine what EVAs they might see, and we try to show them any unique interface they haven't seen. So specifically for these EVAs coming up, the first one is a deployment of a series of lots of lots of cables. We're basically rewiring station for the international docking adapter. And that's a pretty unique and very, very tough EVA, one to visualize and the other to execute just based on hand strength. And so they were able to practice that, I think, twice. So still very different than, than shuttle days. One other unique aspect is when you've got mixed crews like this, Butch launched months before Terry. Uh, so how do you guys approach that, you know, that phase of when they're not going to have as many opportunities to train together, but yet on orbit they will be doing the spacewalk together? So what we tried to do is on either side of the increments, if they could go out the door with each other, we do try to train at least one, if not two, runs with them just so they can practice their teamwork and their, their ability to, to talk to one another and see how each other works. Everybody's a little different. And um, so I know Butch and Terry actually practiced, I think, twice this first EVA together, and they were able to uh, work on, on their cadence and, and their, their timing together as a team. So you talked a little bit about the different approach of contingency EVAs and what's called planned EVAs, which this one would fall into that category. Um, what are the kind of the challenges of trying to prepare for this type of spacewalk, especially when the timing gets postponed, which we've seen with this one as well? Yeah, um, the challenges come with well, one who's going to go out the door for you, and every crew is a little different, and they all have different types of uh, preferences, if you will. And so we try to write the procedures fairly generically, but we do fine tune them f for the crew as they go out the door, where they wear their tethers, how they like to carry their tools. And so we work closely with the training teams. Again, Butch and, and Terry ha had different training teams, but we work very closely with them as we're writing the procedures. Um, in addition to that, we they, they like say, pull from that basic skill set. And so we do try to make it a generic universal skill set that anyone that has gone through our, our training can, can do or execute that EVA. So that gives us confidence that anyone we have up there can do that. No, it's a great approach. Um, also, what are the tools that you have on orbit for our crew to be able to refresh and um, you know, remain proficient for those spacewalks when they come? So what we do is we actually send up the written procedures that our ground IV, who's the astronaut who will talk to them through the EVA and guide them, um, is, will read. So basically we call it a checklist. We also send up a briefing package that has pictures and um, shots of all the different hardware and places on orbit they're going to see and translate. And then they have a few special tools, one we call Doug, which is a, a computer program they can fly through station and position themselves so they can see it electronically. And they can actually convert that into an on-orbit VR trainer, which is where they actually can wear the laptop on the head. It has a special series of goggles that lets them see what they're doing in an animated environment, but in 3D, so they can actually walk the EVA. So it's pretty incredible. Let's see. Well, one last question. Um, 
what are they doing right now? I know, like I said, we've been following along a little bit with some of the suit preparations they've started, but uh, talk us through the countdown to this first spacewalk coming up on the 20th. Can you tell us what types of activities they'll still be doing to prepare for that? Yeah, so th there, it does ramp up quite a bit. They have to prep the suits um, to make sure they're ready to go. So they go through a series of flushes and tests and check out something called an OFE, where they actually make the suit fit their body. And so it's comfortable when they go out the door. And since they haven't tried it on orbit, they actually grow a little bit. So it makes sure that it, it accounts for any growth they've had on orbit. Then they prepare on the on the task side by prepping their tools. So they gather all the tools needed for each EVA and pack them specifically as needed in the bags to minimize any extra work they would have to do outside. And then they're studying, and they're studying that, that procedure and how it might have changed since they did it once or twice. It's probably been about six months, maybe even eight, since they've seen it, um, just to make sure they remember how they, how they did it in the pool. Well, it sounds like there's just a lot of different um, resources available and to, to prepare all the spacewalkers and the team itself for the EVA. So thanks so much for joining us today and, and sharing a little bit with us about your job and how the team uh, supports our uh, astronauts for the spacewalks. No problem. My pleasure. Again, that was Dr. Sandra Moore, the spacewalk specialist here as part of the International Space Station Flight Control Team.